Hello, it's Will Best, your roadmap reporter here. Now today, I have come to Shoreditch in East London, an area that's full of creative businesses and people who work hard and play hard. But one thing they don't do very well is sleep. In fact, three quarters of British adults say that they have trouble sleeping most nights. And I must admit, I am one of them. So I'm on my way to meet somebody who can hopefully help me sleep a little bit better. I'm meeting sleep psychologist Hope Bastine, who's agreed to show me some of the ways Londoners are trying to address their poor sleep routines. We're going to a place called Pop and Rest, which is literally a place where you can have a nap in the day. I love the idea of a nap, so I can't wait to see this place. Pop and Rest is a nap pod place where you can book to have little naps throughout the day if you're a sleep-deprived soul working in London. Mm. Um, it's, I mean, it sounds like heaven, somewhere to just have little naps. Yeah. What kinds of people use this? People who are commuters, who travel quite long distances to come and work in London. Um, we have a lot of young parents that come in who are quite sleep deprived. And generally anybody who works quite long hours and needs a break from the busy life of London. It doesn't feel like a particularly British idea. Where did this originate from? You're right. It kicked off in New York, the city that never sleeps, and also in San Francisco, Silicon Valley, which is a place full of creative minds, uh, high-functioning brains. And this is the first time it's come to London. Exciting. Well, can I take a look in one of the yeah, pods? Yeah, come and have a look. Wow. It's so cozy in here. Yeah, it's snug. This is the modern day sleep cave. Yeah. It's got everything you need to get you bedding down for a good little nap. So what is it about these pods that makes them so good for sleep? Well, in order to sleep well, we need the environment to be dark, cool, quiet and comfortable. And this little pod mimics just that. There's no TVs, there's no fridges. There's nothing else to get you away from doing what we want to do, which is take a nap. So how long do people normally book one of these pods for? Well, you can book uh, a nap for 15 minutes, half an hour, an hour, or a full sleep cycle, which is 90 minutes. Well, look, n naps are great, but I really need help just getting a good night's sleep. OK, I've got perfect place for you. Great. Hope's taking me to the Z Rooms, a group of hotel apartments that she designed to help people get the perfect night's sleep. Right, so here we are. Welcome to the Z Room. Wow, it's really nice. It's very calming. So what is it about the design that helps you sleep better? So this room is the place that you hang out before you go to bed. So it is a relaxation space. You've got these lovely midnight blue walls that obviously mimic the night sky. That's lovely. And you've got this nice rocking chair to... Yeah, no, I, I do. The rocking chair is a great touch. Yeah. You could sit here all day. Yeah. I do find that I'm naturally kind of more awake in the evenings and at night time. There are generally two types of people. Um, some of us are morning people and some of us are night owls. And this is determined by a genetically encoded clock. So we can't change it. We do need to figure out a way to live with it. I do often have sleepless nights. You know, I go to sleep and I worry that I'm not going to be able to sleep. I, my thoughts are racing through my head. What should I do to get a better night's sleep? The first thing that we need to look at is what happens in your day and how much caffeine you're taking. I usually have about two cups of coffee a day. Yeah. I'll have one in the morning and then one after lunch. Okay, so that, that's not too bad, but maybe you're one of those kind of people who are particularly sensitive to caffeine. Caffeine stays in our system for up to 12 hours and, and caffeine absolutely and utterly destroys your capacity to sleep. Right. And what about using phones? Because I tend to use my phone in bed. <laughs> You really should have a golden rule of not using your phone at least one hour before you plan to be asleep. What else can I do to get that good night's sleep? Well, you can also make sure that your bedroom is really comfortable and relaxing. Let me show you one. Come and have a look at this. Wow, look at that. That is incredibly cool and all I want to do is get into it and sleep. Ah. Oh. It's really nice. 
it's so comfortable and inviting and I feel really relaxed. What is it about this bed that makes me feel so calm? So you've got the soft edges that mimics a cave-like experience, making you feel safe. You've got neutral tones and of course you've got a really comfortable mattress. Well, Hope, it's been fantastic talking to you. You've taught me some really useful things that I can put into practice to help me sleep better. But best of all, you have shown me what I do think is probably my dream bed. So to be honest, I'd quite like to have that nap we've been talking about all day. So can I say goodbye and you leave me here? <laughs> goodbye. Right. Speaking. Your work is done. Thanks, <laughs> Hope. All right. <laughs> well, Hope's given me some brilliant advice and I'm going to take it. I'm going to time my coffee better. I'm going to leave my phone downstairs and I'm going to make my bedroom as cosy as possible. And if I do all of that, then hopefully I'll be out like a light. This is Will Best, your roadmap reporter, finally nodding off.